Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about exporting our project so you can put this up on your server or do whatever you want with it. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at first, we're going to be looking at the game mode campaign. Oh, let me get this over here. Game mode campaign manager. Sorry, brain fart. Anyways, so simply you're just going to take a look over here in the right. You're just going to go in the main setting here and we need to set up all the, uh, um, what is it? The just all the settings. I'm just going to make this really simple. So first thing first, if we're talking about a conflict, uh, you want to change the con. Oh my God. Control points threshold. Now in this sense, this is saying like how many points does one faction need to control to win in a PVE setting. Um, I like to kind of set it to all the points except for the control base. So in this sense, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, Russian points. We're just going to take one because uh, you can't capture the enemy HQ. So really, our control point threshold is four. If you're doing something for PvP, you just want to think about like, okay, what's a solid balance for like, you know, p uh, one faction to win, you know, so you can kind of figure out like what it is. Once that threshold is hit, you got a victory timer that will hit. In this case, it's default set to five minutes. Uh, you can go ahead and change that however you want. Remember, these is all in seconds. So easy. You have the supplies replenish threshold, so you can go ahead and change the number, bring it up more if you want your supplies to replenish themselves faster or lower it down. It really doesn't matter. Same thing for quick supplies replenish multiplier. You can go and bring that up more. So the supplies, again, replenish in the HQ position or any bases up more as well. Uh, supply arrival interval, that's how many uh, seconds in game until it increases. By default is five so every five seconds it would increase basing uh looking on uh the previous points if you want it to be every second you just bring that down to one uh, be prepared because it can get really wacky if you do that um and then of course you got your regular supplies income uh that's just saying like a direct value by default is 10 so with all this on here really it's 20 um up until it hits 1500 points by default um, and then kind of going down here, you can kind of change everything else. For instance, you can change what the HQ base of starting supplies is. By default, it's 600. You can change that number even higher if you want. Um, and then you got the minimum starting supplies and max starting supplies. So this is talking about the uh, points to capture, so not the HQ. So basically right here, you have a minimum starting supplies for them is 75 and a maximum of 250, which means they're just going to grab a number between... 75 and 250 and assign it to that position if you want for example all the control points to be 600 you just set these both to 600 so when a faction captures it they're able to instantly start building stuff um just remember points will not be uh supplies will not replenish unless there is a radio relay at that point so i know some people like to just give enough supplies like 275 just enough for the players to plop down a radio um so yeah that's Something that you can do. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. We're not going to be talking about these. I'll be talking about these in a later video about the faction keys. Um, and that's really about it. If you want to change the suicide penalty cooldown and all this other stuff, you absolutely can. But this is going to be the main thing you're going to want to be changing first before you upload your um, campaign. All right. So now what we're going to do now is we're going to save the world. We're going to go ahead and exit out here. We're going to go back to our... Uh, Let's see our project folder here and we're going to create a folder and we're going to call this missions as such you're going to open up your missions folder and you're going to go to config file and uh you're going to be naming this uh whatever you deem fit for the config file for instance since we're doing operation youtube project i'm just going to say um i'll just do youtube project just something it really doesn't matter too much but we're going to be looking here is the we're looking for a mission header. So you got different ones here. For instance, you got, oh, my bad. That's not what I meant to do. Anyways, I'll just tell it something. It doesn't matter. Anyways, so you got mission header. This is default. If you're making like your own kind of scenario and you already know how to kind of set everything up. However, if you're also just doing a game master in conflict, you can also use this, but you're just going to have to do just a tiny bit of more work. It's not much. You got campaign, which again is for conflict. It's going to have everything more set up uh, by default. Uh, you got combat ops, which is very simple as well. And then the mission header point here, 
um, that's for Game Master. Again, it's all kind of more set up. It's really simple. So in this case, in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the Mission Header campaign. We're going to open this up, double click it, and then here we go. So we're starting from the top here, you got World. We're going to go to our World folder, and we're going to just pull our World. We're going to plop it right on there. The name is going to be the name of the project that's going to be showing up onto the workshop. So in this case, if we um, just put something down, I guess we'll just do YouTube project. <laughs> don't download. Whoops. <laughs> don't download. <laughs> we'll just do that. Um, Arthur, you can just put this down. It really doesn't matter. Um, now, this path is the missions folder path. So, for example, if we go back to our header, we're going to plop this in, plop it right there. And we're going to remove this first portion. So it's missions slash YouTube project dot config. And description, uh, this is just basically, again, something very simple. It's going to show up on your thing when you publish it. So we're just going to say, uh, um, just showing off how to use Reforger tools. And then we can kind of say the same thing here. Details kind of gets more in detail if you want. But description is just a quick description someone can see. Um, when they look in the workshop before they actually click on it, if they just hover over it, they can kind of see what's going on. Okay, now this stuff, this stuff right here, the loading screen, preview image and icon, do not leave that how it is or else it will not publish. What you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna make another folder and we're gonna call this images. Now we're gonna be pulling an image and I'm gonna be explaining this a little bit because um, I don't know what the correct size of the picture you need but i just know like a little processing to go through to do it so for example i'm just going to go in my folders here uh, i'm going to pull up a picture that i have let me see if i can find it all right here we go this one i haven't uh changed the side the size of it and stuff so i kind of already like made this uh, in photoshop but basically you want something that's uh, 1920 by 1080 um, so I just kind of put a picture in Photoshop and then just put words over it. It doesn't matter. You can also like go into uh, the world that you're creating and stuff and you can just like, you know, hit F12 in Steam to get a picture or you can just print your whole entire screen and that's going to be the same resolution. So we're going to take that picture there. We're going to open up paint. We're going to apply it and we're just going to resize it to 33. And then you're just going to save that blah, 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 all nice and easy peasy. So back in our image folders, we're going to take the one that we just edited. We're going to apply it into here. You're going to get all this stuff here. Say yes to all. Basically, it's going to change it and it's going to edit it over to an EDDS and then the JPEG. So we're just going to pull the EDDS and we're just going to apply it right on into here. There we go. Um, so you want to make sure you do change that uh, image. And that's kind of the best way I've learned how to do it. Game mode, we're just going to change this. Uh, you can keep it the same, it doesn't matter, but it's just for, um, sake. Player account, you can bring this up to whatever your server can hold. For instance, uh, my servers can hold, uh, 128. However, sometimes I like to put 40, just to kind of keep things balanced and stuff. Um, but yeah, we, you can go and put that over there. Make sure you do go down to edible game flags. Make sure you pop these on, or else <laughs> all this stuff that you put down, like the AI and vehicles, they will not spawn, which is very funny. My first time doing one, I didn't. It took me two hours to figure that one out. That's great. Anyways, in saving enabled, this allows like in case your server crashes or something happens, you want to keep uh, saving enabled. So that's why um, when it pops back up, people will be able to kick off where they last left off. And you can go ahead and give it a file name. For instance, uh, in this case, I'm just going to call this YouTube conflict. It really doesn't matter. Briefing config. Um, again, not really a whole lot you really need to care about there. And then here you can go and override. So back when we were working on um, that game mode campaign, you can go ahead and override some more of the settings in here and it will work. For instance, let's say I don't want it to start at eight. So anytime the server pops up or when it first starts, uh, we're going to say it's going to start at 3 p.m. instead of 8 a.m. Um, and you can go ahead and change acceleration. For instance, let's say I want daytime acceleration to be 4.5, but at night I want it to go by pretty fast. Boom. There you go. That's how you do that. And then you can go ahead and if you really want to make things weird, you can go ahead and do random starting weather and random weather changes if you really want to. I generally, if you keep this off, it's just going to be sunny and nice, nice and sunny. But uh, you want to click this on to kind of get more of a immersion sake. For instance, as the battles go on, and, you know, it's going to start raining. It's going to start storming, all that other stuff. You can change the XP multiplier if you really want to. Again, if you want people to accelerate a lot faster, I change that. Um, 
Again, this is pretty default map marker. <laughs> Able to delete by anyone. Anyone can delete any map marker. So take that as you will. Uh, map marker limit per player. You can go ahead and change that if you want to. Um, now, if these are set to negative one, it's just going to pull whatever you put into that uh, game mode manager. So if I just keep this all on negative one, it's going to say, OK, well, let's go look at that game mode manager that's put down into the mission. And it's just going to pull that and apply that here. So you can go ahead and leave this um, off. If you do change it, um, again, it makes it a little bit harder. I prefer doing it in the game mode manager much rather than doing it here so I can actually get a good eyes on of stuff. Um, and of course, you got your whitelist, blacklist, and you know you can also ignore the minimum vehicle rank needed to spawn stuff. Um, but yeah, very easy. So now we have our our very funny thingy in our missions. So we're all set there. Now we're going to go to workshop. We're going to publish. And then again, you get your project name. You can go ahead and change this to whatever name you put up over here. It really doesn't matter. You don't need to no longer change uh, this folder. Um, but for whatever reason, if it's not working or it's not finding it, make sure you go to your publish folder in your Armor Reforger workbench, wherever you have that. And generally, your project is going to REV there by clicking that button. Preview image. We're just going to pull that same image from before. Which uh, if we go over here, which I don't have it. Anyways, we're just going to do that. Publish again. Whatever we typed in all the stuff. Preview image, you're just going to find it where you have it located into your project, uh, which is uh, very simple. In this case, you know, we have it somewhere in our folder. But anyways, you can put in as many pictures that you want. It doesn't matter. Category, go ahead and set it to whatever you want. You can do MP, you can also put in SP, you can click multiple stuff if you really want to. Again, it's all up to you. And then tags, you can go and type in, like, for instance, in this situation, conflict, PVE, um, I don't know, co-op, we can just put that down. And then your summary, go ahead and kind of do the same thing and kind of explain what's going on. This is a very uh, quick summary of what's in your stuff here. So just project to help people learn. Yay. And then description is a little bit more in detail. Um, just some points put down at random because I was too lazy to do something super interesting. <laughs> Don't download me. <laughs> Anyways, you can go and put whatever you want and stuff. Uh, some people too, after the upload once, you can go ahead and push an update. And you'll have a change notes section and you can go and put down what you changed and stuff, which is actually uh, really cool and really neat. Anyways, and then you want to hit publish and then it will push up to the workshop. Um, if for whatever reason, if it's not like publishing at all, giving you error codes, go to the official Arma Discord and go down to the workshop section or the infusion engine section of a reforger and kind of give out your code and be like, hey, this is the error I'm getting. I don't know what's going on you'll get a response very quickly and they'll be like, oh yeah, this is the problem. This is how you fix it. Like seriously, abuse the official armor discord when you're having any weird issues, because I guarantee you several people have also had that same issue and they have been super helpful for me. Um, anyways, that's basically it. That's the beginning of the tutorial section. Uh, going forward, I'm going to be talking more about more advanced things, like how to make a custom faction, how to um, adjust cargo loads on like vehicles and stuff there's a lot more that we can take a look at and look into but anyways that's the very basics hopefully you guys learned something through this section and i hope you guys are able to make some really amazing projects anyways till next time i'll see you guys soon hey thanks for watching if you learned something today go ahead and like comment subscribe and if there's something that you like to see as a tutorial please let me know also be sure to check out my twitch i sometimes do dev streams from time to time so you might be able to learn something from there anyways take it easy Bye bye